Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder, pondering these points, really thinking about them. Why? Because every day we've covenanted to spend some meaningful moments with the Master. This has been an exceptional week, and um, we've been looking at how to keep your mind, uh, how to mind your mind, how to get your mind to mind, because um, during this pandemic, it's, it's easy to come, become mentally and emotionally unbalanced. Uh, the great pastor, preacher, scholar in Richmond, Virginia, St. Paul Baptist Church, Dr. Lance Watson said that you want to not, don't lose your mind in the midst of trouble because you're going to need your mind when the trouble is over. A special shout out to, uh, to, to Dr. Lance. Appreciate you, brother. But uh, we've been looking at this fourth chapter of Philippians and the things you have to do to kind of keep your mind, not only during a pandemic, pandemic, but when you're going through any crisis, when all hell breaks loose in your life, you've got to rejoice in the Lord always. That's what Paul says, or rejoice in your union with the Lord, in your union, not with your cars, not with your house, but in the Lord, because you can lose everything but the Lord. Practice the presence of the Lord. Paul said, let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. Uh, he says, don't worry. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. If God takes care of the birds, if God clothes the flowers, then God will take care of your tomorrows when your tomorrow comes. He says, pray, pray. Ask God for what you need. In thanksgiving, learn to be thankful because if you're not thankful, you're th not thoughtful because thankful people are happier, healthier, and holier. And now today, I'm going to give you two in one lesson, and these two are critical. You've got to get this. This is absolutely critical. So let's look at verse 8 of our lesson today, where Paul says, in conclusion, my friends, and this is Saturday, so we're concluding this thing. Fill your minds. This is about keeping your mind. It's all about mind. Fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Now, already we said, if you want to keep your mind, if you want your mind to mind, rejoice, practice presence of the Lord, don't worry, pray, exercise a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving, and then here is the sixth principle, and that is control your thought life. Control your thought life. He says, uh, fill your mind with those things that are good and deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. In other words, feed your mind positive things, positive realities, positive truth. I'm not saying live a Pollyanna life. I'm not saying deny the reality of suffering and pain and injustice and racism. That's not what I am saying. I'm saying that you've got to look at the bad and extrapolate something good mentally that you can feed your mind about even in the midst of the bad. You ever notice that the word attention and attend are spelled alike? A-T-T-E-N-T-I-O-N, attention, attend, A-T-T-E-N-D, both attend. What is that? Why is that the case? Because you always attend to whatever gets your attention. So if, 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 if your attention is on negative things, or if your attention is on what some people have done to you to hurt you, to insult you, and to get over on you, that is the thing you will attend to. Now, there's a lot of other positive things you can attend to, but you don't attend to the positive things, the things that really mean Thing, mean the important things because that's not what's getting your attention. And you have to be very intentional about it because uh, your thought life 
controls your life. As a person is, or a person thinks, so is that person, which is a paraphrase of what the book of Proverbs says to us. Uh, I told you uh, several weeks about a particular person uh, who had someone that they were married to leave their life, and they were devastated by this. And um, I told the person, you know, you know, certain people, God is moving out of your life. And it is true that sometimes, here's, here's what I mean by positive. I'm not saying don't hurt because uh, you, you, the person left you and the marriage is over. I'm not saying that that's, don't hurt. I'm saying, how are you going to process that? How, what are you going to, how are you going to interpret that? Are you going to let the devil interpret that for you? You can even let people interpret it for you. You got to fill your mind with those things that are good and deserve praise. Sometimes God moves people out of your life for your protection, for your protection. And when God has moved somebody out of your life for your protection, don't run after them. Which is to say that that's not to minimize what has happened. That's just to say that I'm looking at this same situation and I'm feeding my mind with some positive truth that I need to know about some bad situation. Because you, you can't rise any higher than your thought life. You can't rise high and think low. If you think low, you will go low. If you think backwards, you will go backwards. If you think you have a future, you've got a future. Now, you've got to work and some things have to take place. I'm not talking about mind science or uh, any form of prosperity, gospel. I don't believe in that. You still have to work for justice. She has to work for reparations. If you're African Americans, or excuse me, black Americans, I don't like to say African American, but if you're a black American, you still have to work for reparations. But, but you've got to think it if you're going to get it. You gotta think it. Thoughts are critically important. You've got to feed your mind with the right Things, Amen. He says, whatever things, he says, in conclusion, fill your minds with those things that are good, deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. You know why that's important also? Because you will never do what you mentally cannot see yourself doing. If you want to lose weight, I got a friend named Michael Hicks. He's a good guy. In fact, he's my cousin. And Michael Hicks has lost 40 pounds. But you know why he lost those 40 pounds? He lost those 40 pounds because mentally he, he could see himself losing 40 pounds. If he couldn't see himself losing 40 pounds, he wouldn't lose it. Because you'll never do what you mentally cannot see yourself doing. So if you want to keep your mind, control your thought life. And by controlling your thought life means don't let people dump negativity and garbage into your mind. Watch those negative folk who just love to pour stuff. You know who they are. Some folk you just can't talk to because they're so negative. They gossip. They're always talking about somebody. It's always some drama. Your mind, look, you can't afford to have that type of stuff going in your mind. You got to think about the goodness of God, the grace of God, the future that God has for you. The things I talked about yesterday that we should be thankful for. Well, I told you that we're going to close today with two teachings. First of all, and this is number six, control your thought life. And you see that in verse eight, fill your mind, fill your mind, fill your mind, fill your mind with those things. We said, this is all about mind, how to get your mind to mind, fill your mind with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. And now let me close this series in Philippians four with the final and seventh thing. Drum roll, please. This is the seventh thing you've got to do. After you rejoice, after you have practiced the presence of God, after you have said, I'm not going to worry anymore, after you've been praying, after you've got a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving, after you said, okay, I'm going to control my thought life, this is what you finally have to do if you're going to keep your mind together. 
Get a life. Quit sitting around doing nothing. Get up, get some goals, and get busy. Because as long as you're hanging around the house, not doing anything, but just sitting around, you are a sitting duck for Satan. I was helping a little girl ride her bicycle. I was out jogging in my community. And as I was jogging, there was a mother who was trying to teach her daughter how to ride her bike. And she was walking her, walking her uh, along beside her. And I know how to stay on top of a bike if you're trying to teach a child how to bike. So I went to the mother and I said, uh, can I help you with this? I said, this girl can ride this bike. She can ride this bike, and she's going to ride this bike in 10 minutes. And she said, okay. And I said, now look me. You put your hands on the handlebars, and you keep pumping. When I say keep pumping, you keep pumping. And all I did was held the back of her seat on the bicycle and ran hard with her. And she kept pumping, and she kept pumping. She kept, I said, keep pumping. Keep pumping, keep pumping, keep pumping, keep pumping. I had my hand on her seat. I said, keep pumping. I'm beside you. I got you up. Keep pumping. And all of a sudden, I was walking, running beside her. I lifted my hand. I held up my hands. I said, keep pumping, keep pumping. And she was riding the bike by herself. Do you know what she was doing? As long as she kept pumping, she stayed up. And as long as you keep pumping, Keep going, keep going. It's only when you stop and you don't have any goals, you don't have any dreams, that when you mentally have a breakdown. There's a passage of scripture that is found in the book of 1 Kings. It's so powerful. This man who's a, who has been given this high priority prisoner to guard, he's part of security. And they say, look, man, guard this prisoner. And they wouldn't have given the, the prisoner to the man if they didn't think he could guard him. But when they came to get the prisoner, the prisoner was gone. And this is the reason why he was gone. He says, but I got busy with other things and the man escaped. In other words, while I was busy doing something I shouldn't have been doing, the thing that I should have been doing escaped. You need to get a life. Quit meddling in other folks' business. Quit sitting around talking about every folk. You know, if you got a life, you don't have time to be talking about everybody else. You don't have time to be worrying about what other people are doing or that he said, she said stuff. You're too busy with your own life. Get a life. You want to get your mind together? Get busy. You're not too old. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Get up and be about something. What is it that you're supposed to be doing? Write the book? Get back in school? Lose some weight? Work on some relationships? Clean your house? Get some new skill set? You, you, if there is a mental vacuum in your life, the devil will fill that mental vacuum with all types of negative things. And while I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about, I might as well go ahead and say it. Get a life and leave for other folk alone. You know, I've been doing these powerful points to ponder now since March, every day. And I get so much positive feedback from people who are being blessed. And I give God the glory for that. Because anything I'm doing is because God has given me the power and the grace to do it. And I'm just the mailman delivering the letter. But I've got one person who contacts me every week. And this one person wants me to talk more on theological issues that are important to this one person. Now, I talk about theology. I usually talk about theology on Sunday morning in my sermons. I talk about social justice every day on Twitter. But on the powerful points to ponder, I'm giving devotional messages. And there's a difference between a devotional message and a theological message and a social justice message. This is devotional messages. And this person just always wants to critique me. And I'm saying, look, why are you so busy meddling in my life? Get a life. You do you and let me do me. I'm not calling you looking over your shoulder because I'm too busy trying to do what God wants me to do. 
My God, if this is not for you, that's okay. That's all right. Turn to the person who wants to talk about the four horsemen in the apocalypse of, of the book of Revelation. If you think that's the relevant thing to listen to, go, go talk to somebody or, or listen to some Old Testament scholar talk about the J-E-P, JEPD hypothesis in the book of Genesis. Go ahead. That's okay. If that's, if that's what floats your boat, let it float your boat. But by all means, quit meddling in other people's business and get a life because the way God keeps you mentally together is you got to rejoice. You got to practice the presence of God. You got to stop worrying. You got to pray. You got to have some thanksgiving in your heart. You got to control your thought life and you got to have some goals and dreams and you got to get busy trying to make those goals and dreams come to pass. And if you're busy working on your own life, then you don't leave any room for the devil to come in with a whole lot of garbage and a whole lot of negativity and a whole lot of things that mess up your mind. And if you do these seven things that, that the word of God says, rejoice, practice the presence of God, pray, thanksgiving, my God, control your thought life and get a life. Here's the conclusion. Paul says will happen to you as I close in verse seven. He says, if you do those seven things and God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe. Heart, how you feel, mind, how you think, that God will keep you mentally in the midst of a pandemic so that your mind will mind you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and everything that we have learned this week. Someone has found their new favorite chapter in the Bible. I pray, oh Lord, that they'll take this, these words from your word off the pages and weave them into their heart and life and practice them that they will write these seven principles down and the scriptures that undergird them and put them in conspicuous places on the refrigerator or maybe even on their desk at work or send them to someone so that we will live them out because we don't want to lose our mind in trouble because we're going to need our mind when the trouble is over. Thank you, Lord, for everything we have learned this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us the entire week for doing this powerful point to ponder. Tomorrow is Sunday. Uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we have a special word for you this Sunday as we continue our series on David. So you join us uh, as we study the book of, of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, the life of David. And also it is the Lord's Supper. And we will be observing the Lord's Supper. So you prepare uh, and get your own elements. We're not legalistic, but uh, you get you uh, a, a cracker or some wheat thins and get you some the elements. And uh, you prepare as we observe the Lord's Supper, the death and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much for uh, all of the responses that I have received from you. Uh, on this, uh, this series, The Powerful Points to Ponder, and perhaps there's some things that you would like me to address, please contact us. And if you don't have a church home, please know that we would love to have you here at St. Stephen Church to be a part of our online community, and you could be a digital disciple, a, a real functioning member of St. Stephen Church online. It can happen online. Uh, I told you that I'm working on a PhD, and um, I'm doing the Ph.D. online. And um, so God has created this vehicle uh, not only for education, but for spiritual development and spiritual formation. So feel free to become a part of St. Stephen Church. If you have any questions or any needs or you want to make any comments or you have something you want addressed, please contact us at info at sfclive.org. God bless your hearts. I'll see you in church tomorrow. Love you. And as closing, oh yeah, and closing, don't forget what we always say, and that is stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. Love you.